Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel. Thank you for joining the summit. I'm really excited for it. Um, and I wanna teach you a lot on how to grow your small business. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to turn your idea into real business. 10 steps from zero to hundreds of sales opportunities with a solid digital strategy. And what I'm gonna end up breaking down to you today is gonna to be based on all the stuff that I know that works, that work not just for me, but that's also worked for our clients. And we have literally hundreds of clients in all different kinds of industries, whether it's D2C, B2B, whether it's B2C, um, it could be a realtor, accountant, it could be a mom and pop business, you know, selling food or restaurants, or it could even be an enterprise company or a Fortune 1000 company. Either way, the strategies that we've used, we know they work. A lot of them are in this presentation. It works for businesses of all sizes. And of course, if you're going through the journey and you just want my team to do everything for you, you can visit NP Digital, N as in Nancy, P as in Paul, digital.com, fill your information and we'll get in touch. So let's dive right in and break down how we can turn your idea into a real business. Now, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you click the alert notification. That way when I go live or release other videos like this, you'll get notified. So step one, turning an idea into a product, right? We have this company called Crazy Egg and we grew it to 100,000 users. So when you look at Crazy Egg, if you're not familiar with it, Crazy Egg is a heat map software. It shows you how people engage and interact with your website. And it has a lot more features than a heat map now, like it can track mouse recording and mouse movements and all that kind of good stuff to show you where people are getting stuck on your website, what you need to do to change it, what you need to do to fix it so that way you can maximize your conversion rate, improve your usability. But here's the thing. When we first launched Crazy Egg and we released it out into the market, it was new-ish. Um, it was most people didn't know about the technology, didn't think about anything like that. And, uh, you know, and when you, when we're going out there into the market, we're just like, how do we get users? How do we tell people, Hey, this is a heat map technology company because not too many people were searching for stuff like that. And not too many people were searching for usability or anything like that. And they're just like, huh, we don't know. Right. They don't know that they need the solution. They don't know that they can go and use something like Crazy Egg to improve this. So how do you appeal to customers that don't necessarily know that they need you? Well, what we ended up doing because we were creating a new type of product is first off, before we launched, we created a prototype. And when we created a prototype, we went out there and we got out to a lot of users, got their feedback, figured out what they thought about the product, what they thought was useful, what they didn't like, fix all the bugs. But more importantly, we, we try to figure out the right messaging by talking to those people. And we learned that even though we were appealing to marketers and trying to focus on usability and conversion rate optimization, a lot of them considered it design oriented. And when I mean design oriented, I'm talking about web design and they're like, Oh, this would be great for my web designer. Oh, this would be great for the web design company that works with us and they can use it to help improve the design. And that made perfect sense because it's not the marketer who is typically modifying design. In many cases, it's the designer. So how do we get out to all those people and reach out to them and convince them that they should check out our product? Well, the first thing we did is we figured out, all right, where are all the designers hanging out? Now, back then they hung out at communities like CSS gallery sites. There were sites like CSS Vault that showcase beautiful new web designs. And people would go there and check them out. So what we did is we started advertising on all these CSS galleries where people showcase beautiful web design work and usable web design work because that's where our target audience was going. That's where business owners went to get inspiration for usable, pretty, amazing designs. That's where web designers went to also get inspiration and showcase their work. Nowadays, there are sites like Dribble, D-R-I-B-B-B-L-E.com. Back then, there weren't. And when we were looking at, you know, the sites to advertise on these galleries, we're barely making any money off of AdSense because it was mainly visual. So there wasn't much text on a page. 
So we would just pay him a few hundred dollars for banner ads. And I kid you not, it was just driving us tons of traffic, thousands and thousands of visitors. And that thousands and thousands of visitors led us to over 10,000 beta signup users before we even launched. And all we had was a homepage that just had a screenshot of what our product looked like and people just fill in their information to get notified when we launched. We also decided to get a lot of press, but we didn't have money to pay a PR agency. So how do we go out there and get bloggers to talk about us? Well, what we did is we created a list of all the popular blogs that we wanted to target that we also felt could use our product Crazy Egg and make their blog better by using it. So we offered them a free account and we showcase them how their visitors interacted with their blog and what they can do to make their blog better. We use this strategy with TechCrunch, Mashable, and a lot of other popular tech sites. And what they did is they did a blog post on us and they showcased their own crazy egg heat map within that blog post. And that spread like a wildfire. People were loving it, great comments. And that also caused people to sign up for crazy egg on a uh, quote unquote beta invite basis. The next thing I want to cover is turning an idea into a business, right? So I did once something called a 100K challenge on my old blog, Quick Sprout. And what this 100K challenge was is where I said, hey, anyone can achieve a business that gets from zero to $100,000 a month in revenue within 12 months. And I could do this without using my name. So I ended up creating a blog post telling everyone, hey, I want to create a $100,000 a month business within 12 months. I don't care to use my name. And we're going to end up doing this. And I'm going to even let you pick the business. So when we end up going through that process, um, when we ended up going through that process, we were just like, all right, blog audience, you got all my readers. I was like, what kind of business do you want me to create? And they picked one. And the business they created or wanted me to create was a nutrition website or a blog. And I was like, sounds good. I'll figure out how to make money with a nutrition website or a blog. So I found someone, Mike, my buddy, he would be the face of it. I taught him how to do a lot of the work and we went out. He wrote a lot of articles, did tons of content marketing, taught him how to write blog posts. He built relationships with other players in the space, guest posted, got them to promote it, got them to promote our articles on social media, got them to promote our articles on their, um, their own blogs and linking out. And over time, we built up a lot of traffic. And eventually, we ended up monetizing through selling supplements. Um, we ended up getting a lot of email subscribers, as you can see on the left side. Uh, that was building up fast. But where we actually made a lot of the money was taking the supplements, selling them on the site, selling them on Amazon. And that drove a lot of sales. And what we did was we took the email list and started pushing them towards Amazon. And when we pushed them on Amazon, it started causing our Amazon rankings to increase for fish oil supplements and started getting our revenue higher and higher. Now, keep in mind, this didn't make us a ton in profit, right? When we're trying to create a business that's doing $100,000 a month, I'm not necessarily talking about profit. That's a whole other challenge, which is much more difficult. I was just talking about revenue, profitable business nonetheless. Um, but going through this whole process, it worked really well because we were able to take our email list and use it as leverage for other platforms like Amazon, which is something that you can do as well. And another strategy that we use that helped us drive a lot of sales is on Nutrition Secrets. And this is a picture of Mike on the left side. We had a quiz and that quiz had a journey that people would go through and they can end up, you know, putting in information on, hey, I have, want to be a lead, I want to learn everything. And then from there, we can sell them on a product and then we can sell them on upsells. But we also had a quiz where you would say, hey, I'm a man or I'm a woman and here's my you know weight, here's what I'm looking to improve. And then from there, we would tell them what products are right for them. And that drove quite a bit of sales as well. And you should consider that strategy. You can use tools like lead quizzes to do that for your website. And it's an easy way to drive people to a lead or even a sale if you're selling a physical product. You can also check out neilpatel.com slash quiz. Go through that. And you can use that to 
as a template and an example for figuring out how you can structure your own quiz to get leads and sales from it. Number three, lead capture. So if you go to neilpatel.com, you'll notice everywhere, I have tons of opt-ins and call to actions. Some of these you won't see anymore. There's some of my older ones. Some of them you still see today. Uh, and I keep rotating up and trying different ones. The one on the top left, this one was by uh, Elena, skincare by Elena. Uh, she has an e-commerce site and she used a lot of this stuff to grow her traffic. Uh, the one on the right, lead capture for a URL, still use that today. Then there's banner ads of me holding up a sign or even ones on uh, you know, getting loved by Google. And you can take these banner ads and drive them to landing pages or product pages. Doesn't matter if you're doing lead gen and it doesn't matter if you're doing uh, selling physical products because you can also drive them to a landing page that sells a physical product. I also use webinars. This has worked well over the years. Uh, and I would do webinars that started every 15 minutes, like clockwork. So whether it started at 11 o'clock, 11.30, 11.45, 12, 12.15, 12.30, 12.45, 1. You get the point. I never started a webinar at 12.10. It was always even numbers like 12, 12.15. And there's just a countdown clock based on when the next webinar was going to start. I use EverWebinar for this. And whatever webinar is, is it's a webinar software that will take your webinar. Um, you would do one live and then it would record it. And then it would make it where you can just continually have an evergreen webinar that just keeps going and going and going. And you can generate sales. Now live webinar converts better than an evergreen webinar from what I tested, but it's still better than nothing. Um, and it, the cool thing about the evergreen webinar is you can consistently get sales without doing as much work. So, but when you combine both of them, it works out great and you should check out doing a webinar and you can check out tools like ever webinar for that. I also did journeys. I found that journeys convert better than giving away like a free ebook or a PDF. Uh, excuse the language here, but from aha to oh shit, I'm sharing everything on my journey to hundred thousand monthly visitors. I'm learning a lot and so will you. I placed this at the top of my blog uh, and this worked really well, generated tons of emails. The issue with this though was eventually my traffic kept growing. I got to a million, now I'm getting that 7 million I think visitors a month, sometimes more, sometimes less. Sometimes I get up all the way up to 9 million a month. It's really hard to do a journey on, hey, I'm sharing everything on my journey to 10 million monthly visitors. Like It's not relatable. Um, and I know with yours, you're not probably doing something on traffic. It could be weight loss. It could be anything, mental health. Uh, it can be B2B, B2C type of stuff, but it needs to be relatable. If you can't make it relatable, it won't convert as well. And I stole this concept from Groove HQ. And when I say I stole this, they know I use that. I talk to them. I'm friendly with them. And they didn't mind. Their journey was from aha to oh shit. I'm sharing everything on my journey to $100,000 uh, a month in revenue. And people loved it, they followed it, and I took that concept and I turned it into visitors. Another one that worked really well as an exit intent, um, you know, I did this on Quicksprout back in the day, the step-by-step -step guide to monster traffic generation. They click yes, they can get a guide on generating more traffic. They click no, no, I have enough traffic. And then from there, I would send them a guide on, hey, uh, or I would have a screen that says, Congrats on having massive traffic. Now let's focus on doubling your conversion rate. Put in your name and email. Another one I did was an animated exit pop-up. So when you say exit neilpatel.com, I would say learn the simple tactic I use to rank number one for online marketing. And that background image was actually a Google ranking and I would scroll and it was an animated GIF and I would scroll and show you my rankings for that term. And I'll show you how I rank number one on Quicksprout for the word online marketing, which was one of my websites back then. Hack number four, or technically step number four, Facebook hacks. So with Facebook, everyone has their profiles, they link out in their bio and stuff like that. You're finding that your reach is dying down and it wasn't as good as it used to be. What should you do? Should you give up on Facebook? Of course not. You gotta do something. There's still ways to do well on Facebook, right? Well, there is. Basic stuff, you put your links out to your other social profiles like I did right here. You see my LinkedIn, my YouTube, my Instagram, my Twitter. That all helps, but there must be more, right? And there is. So what I've realized with Facebook Reach, and we've done a ton of tests, 
you need to focus on engagement first. And what I mean engagement, I'm not talking about likes. Getting more likes doesn't actually help you get that many more likes. Getting more comments helps you get way more likes. And the reason being is it's much more work to leave a comment than it is to click the like button or share button. And Facebook knows that. So really focus on what can you post that's thought provoking that'll cause people to want to leave a comment. You should also consider mixing up your post formats. So I used to just post an image and then link to one of my articles. And what I found by that is Facebook doesn't like you linking out to websites outside of Facebook. They want you to keep people on Facebook. So then I started posting um, videos and images and stuff that would keep people on Facebook and it did really, really well. And when you're doing this, I want you to use attractive images and videos that really stand out so people will wanna click on them. You also wanna see when the best time to post. Facebook offers a lot of analytics and don't just post whenever you want, post when your audience is online. You also wanna connect with them emotionally. How can you convey emotion or really pull it out so then that way people are like, huh, what can I end up pulling out so then that way I can get people to uh, really leave that comment. Not just share the article and like it, but really leave a detailed comment and then even re respond to other people leaving comments because that's what Facebook loves because it keeps them on their platform. I also want you to repurpose the evergreen content. Look, social media is exhausting. There's so much time you can spend on it and I know it can be really draining on you. So what I want you to do is repurpose your existing content. Heck, we even purpose content that you post on other social sites and post it on Facebook. You can even take content that you put on your website and repurpose the whole thing on Facebook. Remember, Facebook does not penalize for duplicate content that is all around the web and Google doesn't penalize for duplicate content either. If you can, I also want you to try to get verified on Facebook. I think they may require like a passport image or a driver's license image, but try to get verified. It's good. It uh, provides credibility. I want you to also ask your followers to turn on notifications. So that way they know when you're posting, when you get these notifications turned on, you'll get much, much, much more engagement. And I want you to optimize your link post. When you're linking out to your website, what can you convey so people really want to click on that link and go to your website? And also try a user-generated content campaign. This is a great way to have your followers, your community, to really help encourage uh, the virality of your page and get other members and followers as well. We've talked about formats, content types. I want to list out some of them here. You can use a wide variety, whether it's videos, images, user-generated content, blog posts, podcasts, quotes, Quotes used to do a lot better uh, years ago than they do now, but you can still rotate them up. Like quotes from Elon Musk will still probably do well, or memes, uh, inspirational images, you know, quizzes, questions. Y you can do GIFs, Vines, trending topics. Like remember when everyone was talking about uh, the Game GameStop stock a few years ago, uh, not few few weeks ago, and how everyone on Reddit was pumping up the stock market, or how Elon Musk, you know, talked about Bitcoin and uh, Dogecoin and the cause of pricing to go up as well. But these are all different types of formats that you can be using. And the reason I say test them out is what works, you know, today may not work tomorrow. What works for others may not work for you. And you got to continue to try rotating things up and trying different things out to figure out what is the right fit. You may also be wondering, hey, should I boost my Facebook organic reach with some more organic stuff or even maybe some paid ads? You can try paid ads. Uh, I found that it's better than nothing, but there's also some manual steps that you can take to really boost your organic reach. And the first thing you can do is, who are the people that you know that have similar businesses that may like your content? Build a network with them, talk with them. Ask them to share your content and do the same for you or for them more so. And when you do that, what you'll find is your content will much more likely to do better and their content will do better and it creates a win-win situation. There's also a lot of groups on Facebook where you can get potential clients. And with these uh, Facebook groups, what you'll find is if you just go in there and promote your own stuff, you won't do well. But if you go in there, provide tons of value for weeks on weeks end, and then talk about some of your own articles or your own business, you'll naturally have no, people will have no issues with it and it'll drive traffic. So give before you ask, you know, 
I, I follow the rule of give nine times, maybe ask once. The reason I say maybe ask once is sometimes I want to give 19 times and only ask once. But a general rule of thumb is if you're giving 90 plus percent of the time, you're going to be in good shape. Look at your Facebook friends list as well. Is any of your friends business owners or have a lot of followers or do you think they would not mind hopefully helping you out and promoting some of your stuff? If you hit up a lot of your friends and ask, most of them will ignore, but some will actually do it and have no issues at all. And it's okay if someone says no, don't have any hard feelings, it's normal. Uh, also look at your page post engagement. Um, and when you're doing this, you know, you can do a campaign targeted to really boost your visibility. You could target specific audiences, specific people. And this is what I mean by doing some paid stuff as well. Look, what Facebook wants overall is to improve the user experience and keep people on Facebook as long as possible. The longer they keep on Facebook, the more they win. And that's how they measure success because the more they keep them on Facebook, the more likely they are to get someone to click on an ad. If they want someone to leave Facebook, they want them to leave by clicking on an ad. So they're making money. And if you can create amazing content that keeps people on Facebook more, you'll do well. I also want you to start posting based off your audience. As I mentioned, there's analytics. Remember how we were talking about post time? This is an example of engagement based on time, based on the day of the week. It'll tell you what you should be doing, what you shouldn't. Um, Facebook provides their own analytics and you can also leverage tools like we use Sprout Social. Uh, there's also Buffer, Hootsuite, and you can use all these tools to figure out, hey, when should you maximize or post to maximize your engagement? How can you post to relate to your ideal customer? What are their pains? What do they want? What are the content that appeals to them that'll maximize your conversion rate? And when you're doing this, just remember you really need a clear call to action, such as click here, go here, call us, contact us, because if you're not that clear, you're not gonna get as much traffic and sales. Um, if you can, this one's gonna be a little bit tougher. There's a lot of popular pages on Facebook. Here are ones that are super popular. If you ever get featured on these, you'll do really well. But there's a lot of pages within your niche that aren't as popular, but that are popular for your niche. And maybe they only had, you know, let's say 10,000 followers or 50,000 followers. That's still enough. If, you know, you get out there and get on one of these pages, it can create other pages that can talk, promote you and push you and it all adds up. And if your product that you're selling or service that you're selling is worth a lot of money and is expensive, hey, if someone even only has a thousand followers, but they're full of buyers, that's more valuable than someone having a million followers with no one who really cares about your product or service. Now let's dive into some YouTube hacks. Here's the thing that most people don't tell you about YouTube. YouTube is the opposite of Google's traditional algorithm. Even though Google owns YouTube, it really is the opposite. What I mean by that is SEO on Google is slow and steady wins a race. SEO on YouTube is quick wins the race. So it's it's time to view. So how many people can will watch and engage with your video in the first hour it goes out, first few hours, and first day? The better you can get those engagement metrics, the more virality you're gonna have and the more people will see your content. So when your video goes out, do email blasts, push notification blasts, uh, talk about it, ask your friends to leave a comment, all this kind of stuff is really gonna help with your engagement and that really is the key to YouTube that most people don't talk about. There's a lot of different content types that you can use on uh, YouTube and it depends for the business type. You can do like the, the, the soap opera versions, like my niece and nephew, they love watching videos of adults, you know, doing kids stuff. I don't get it, but hey, some of these videos have like 100 million views. I literally don't understand the appeal of it, but hey, they like it. Even my daughter, when she goes on YouTube, she's really young. She doesn't like the cartoon stuff. She likes the real people stuff. Uh, on the flip side, in B2B, educational stuff, evergreen content does really well. Or you can do like challenges or social experiments, like sometimes like what Logan Paul does or Jake Paul does, um, where they may challenge another boxer or something like that. Webinars on YouTube and going live on YouTube works really well. I've driven a lot of conversions from it. Going live like Ty Lopez does and just selling on YouTube, that can do wonders for you as well. But these are all ways to do extremely well from YouTube. And just make sure you add links whenever you post content. 
And when I say add links, I'm talking about to all the content uh, uh, that you have all around the web, right? From, hey, what is the stuff that you're selling to your website link to downloadable uh, versions, all that kind of stuff uh, will help, like transcripts, just following all that will really help with love from YouTube and driving traffic to your website. So YouTube, I did an interesting survey with my Ubersuggest audience. If you don't know Ubersuggest, it's my SEO tool. Go to neilpatel.com slash Ubersuggest, check it out. And I said, you know, how'd you hear about us? The number two way was actually YouTube. That's how powerful it is. And I also want you to get your videos featured on popular channels. There's a lot of channels out there that you can do co-brands and stuff like that with that can really help boost your numbers as well. So number six, sales process. Look, the sales process starts all with LinkedIn. You can build huge businesses from this. Uh, my sales team has grown their business from this. You want to reach out and connect to people on LinkedIn. Uh, over time, you'll get a lot of leads. And then you're going to do discovery calls and find out, hey, is this a right fit for me? Is this not a right fit for them? And you'll figure out if it is a good fit. And then from there, if it is, you do a strategic plan. And then you go into a pitch and you have your decision meeting, follow up, and you know you go from there and try to close the deal. What you'll find out on LinkedIn, I'm going to give you one hack that will really change everything uh, from your LinkedIn process. Just go and hit people up that will be your ideal customers and ask them for feedback. Like I would say, Hey, Neil, love what you've done in the marketing space. Uh, we actually have an interesting product in this space. Do you mind if I pick your brain and get your feedback? I want to figure out how we can make the product better. Uh, and you can do it with services as well. And a lot of people are like, yeah, sure, no problem. And when you show them the product, some people will give you feedback. But as you keep iterating and making it better, a lot of people just feel like, hey, this is amazing. Actually, no, this is great. This will fit us well. Yeah, we'd love to hear more. Maybe we can schedule a follow-up call and maybe even do a pitch. And that's how you generate a lot of sales from LinkedIn. But it's not that simple. There are some preparations. You got to figure out what's the goal for you. The goal for you is to receive a lead, confirm an appointment, match with them, make sure the quality is high, and close the deal. The goal for them is, hey, they need to know your business. They need to, you, they need to know how you're going to help them. They need to know how you're going to uh, help them solve their problems. And you got to do homeworks. Like your sales reps are you. You don't want, you know to just have tons of leads and tons of calls. You want the right ones. You want to cancel the ones that aren't qualified or the bad ones or the fake leads. You want to prepare for the call in advance and do your homework on the business and really figure out how you can knock their socks off. And of course, when you attend the call, you want to make sure that you just don't talk, but you also listen. You know, selling isn't just about talking and selling. It's about listening. Listening has a huge value point on generating more sales. Um, there's also a lot of tools out there that can really help with getting you the most amount of bang for the buck from your leads because just because you have a lead doesn't mean it's going to close. You want the lead to convert into a sale and people to follow up with you and actually get on the phone. And tools like Calendly and Sidekick and Zoom and Skype and Sales Navigator can all help with this. My favorite tool out of all of them is Calendly. Check it out. It really helps with the show up rate for your leads. And when you do your discovery calls, the goal for you is to get to know them on a personal level understand what products or services they're interested in. And the goal for them is to understand their own problem. Believe it or not, not everyone knows their own problem. And make sure that your sales reps understand that problem and can figure out how to get them a solution that aligns in a price point that makes sense for them so that way you can close them on a deal. You can also use tools like HubSpot or Salesforce to log calls and emails. But when you're logging calls, it's very important to let people know on the phone right away, right when the call starts, that you're logging it. So then that way people know, especially if you're doing the full recording of it. If you're just writing notes, that's one thing. But if you're doing a recording, you need to let them know uh, for privacy reasons. You may not have legal issues within your country, but it's just the kind, courteous thing to do. So I would still recommend it no matter what. Uh, and then you get into strategic plan. The goal for you is to demonstrate business case to justify the cost versus product. Uh, and you want to show them step by step on how you guys can work together. And you want to eliminate any of their objections. And you also want to create a sense of urgency that, hey, you can help them solve the problem right now. And you want to get them going with a lot of case studies. So number seven, ongoing optimization. If you look at neilpatel.com and go into Wayback Machine, you'll notice that I have so many different... Uh, versions of the Neil Patel site over time. 
And, you know, over time, that's evolved. And the reason being is because I figured out better ways to drive more conversions and sales. And I want you to do the same. You know, my site and homepage have been saved over 3,000 times. I continually update and modify it. And I want you to do the same too. Don't ever stop because that's how you grow your business. Number eight, neilpatel.com. I get a lot of traffic. You know, you can see the stats here. And the reason I get traffic is I created a lot of educational based content. And a lot of it's from SEO. And if you look at a lot of my key pages, some of them are tools, but a lot of them are blog posts. The point here that I'm making with you is I had this blog for years and in the early days, it didn't make any money. I just kept doing it and I kept educating and helping people out. If you play the long game, not the short game, not the game in six months where you become rich or successful. I'm talking about the long game, five, 10 year outlook. You know, as Bill Gates said, it's crazy, you know, and I'm butchering the quote here. It's crazy how people overestimate on what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in five or 10 years. It was something like that. The point is play the long game, create content, give, 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 help people, and eventually you can monetize your blog and create a big business. Nine, training content. I love this one. I have a lot of training content, neilpatel.com, neilpatel.com slash training. And when you create a lot of training content, it creates brand awareness, it creates indirect branding, and you get a lot of leads, and then you can sell them on more courses and training and lead generation. Amazing business model. It drives a ton of traffic for me, and I want you to check it out. You can also get free training literally on neilpatel.com slash training for any form of marketing, digital marketing, SEO, email marketing, social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you name it, there's a course on there. Check them out, it's all free with homework assignments, handouts, worksheets, all that stuff to make your life easier. Like I mentioned, I have stuff on e-commerce content, the list goes on and on. And number 10, I mentioned this a little bit, I want you to think long-term. It's all about the long game. Look, the last year and a half, have stuff like COVID and stuff, some ups and downs, but I play the long game. I don't really worry about what's going to happen in a year. I, I look at what's going to happen in the long run. Sometimes things don't go the way I want. Sometimes things go great, but it really is all about playing the long game. And when I do that, I built up a lot of traffic, built up a lot of demand. Nothing great is built overnight. There is no fly-by-night successes because those fly-by-night successes usually go down just as quick as they came. So the key takeaways is you got to go and do something, play the long game in whatever you're executing on, whether you pick the YouTube strategy or whether you pick, you know, follow my 100K challenge or any of that stuff, you got to just take action. If you don't take action, you're not going to do well. And when you're doing this, don't expect to get results right away. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's a reality. Marketing takes time. So let's go over 10 steps to build a solid digital marketing strategy, turn idea into a product, then you want to turn idea into a business. Capture some leads, leverage the Facebook hacks, then do the YouTube stuff, follow the sales process, ongoing optimization, and leverage my blog, a lot of the tactics I use, and create your own content like that. Also create training content, and then think long term. So that's it. Thank you guys very much for your time. I hope your businesses are growing. Appreciate you joining the summit.